Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. This week I'm going to discuss some Windows privilege escalation techniques, one of my favorite topics. Uh, specifically, I'm only going to be talking about local privilege escalation techniques though. Um, later on, on, in another episode, I'm going to discuss some network-based uh, privilege escalation techniques as well. Um, and then we'll also do one that focuses on uh, Linux as well. But this one's specifically Windows, so let's just jump right in. So admin access should be rare. Um, in pretty much every scenario that I can think of, um, standard employees shouldn't have administrative access to their systems. Um, you know, one common thing that I've seen is where a remote like worker, uh, let's say like you have like somebody in an organization that goes like offsite from, from the standard office, um, you know, they're out for the day. A lot of times they carry a laptop with them and a lot of times network admins decide to give them administrative access to their own system for the sake of troubleshooting. Um, and you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll see like, you know, we'll get handed a laptop for an assessment and we already have admin, admin access and, uh, you know, that's just, it's not a good thing. Um, so, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention though, too, is network admins not only have to worry about provisioning the access correctly, right? Like they don't need to, they not only have to worry about like making sure that users have the correct permissions over their own systems, but they also need to worry about vulns, vulnerabilities on those systems as well that could allow a non-privileged user to escalate those privileges. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, so, you know, the, the question sometimes we get is like, so what if users are admins? Um, <laughs> well, uh, like what, what could you actually do with that? Well, it leads to many other attack vectors. Um, for one, you could extract the local password hashes from a system and then potentially use those against other systems. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll find that the local admin password isn't being randomized across multiple systems. So it's very easy to just take a password hash and perform a pass the hash attack and just hop from system to system um, by simply just having admin access to one system. Um, additionally, you could do uh, network level types of attacks. So for example, um, if you have admin access to a system, you can start up uh, uh, SMB servers and, and perform like, uh, uh, poisoning type of attacks like like LLMNR, NBNS poisoning. Um, you can also, you know, you can do packet capturing on the localhost, like so you might be able to sniff something coming across the wire there. Um, you can, I mean, obviously users who are admin, they can install software. Um, and then, you know, additionally, if you're an admin, you can typically extract clear text creds from memory, um, provided it's not, you know, the latest version of Windows, because, you know, they've actually done some nice mitigating uh, efforts against that. Um, but you know, so like, yeah, it's bad for just its typical user to have admin access to a system. So what are some common privilege escalation techniques that, uh, that I use? And, and I think, um, you know, a lot of other people will end up using too. So one thing, um, that I always look for first, uh, when I get access to Windows box is just check for missing patches, um, on the system because, you know, there's plenty of, uh, exploits and vulnerabilities out there for Microsoft itself, um, for privilege escalation vectors on systems. So. Um, you know, you can run this WMIC command to find the latest hotfixes that were installed, the latest patches that were installed on the system, and then you go compare that to a list of, uh, of, of potential um, patches that have exploits available for them in terms of privilege escalation. So uh, what you could do is search uh, exploit DB from Kali with the tool called Searchploit. Searchploit is really awesome, and the fact that you can give it a number of different search terms and search for specific exploits uh, regarding what you want. So like if you wanted to search for uh, like an MS-16, um, like a KB article um, for Windows in a local privilege escalation um, uh, type of vulnerability, you could do search exploit MS-16 Windows local. So, I mean, if you, you know, if you knew that the system hasn't been patched in, you know, 10 years, you could search, you know, MS-08 or whatever, um, or MS-07. You know, um, and, uh, you know, find a number of different potential exploits for uh, the, the patches that are missing from that system. Another thing that I always like to do in terms of like finding, uh, additional access, not necessarily privilege escalation, but it could lead to privilege escalation is finding credentials, uh, from a user for other sites. And one of the best ways to do that is like, say you've got access to, um, a user's account on a system. Um, you can usually extract their credentials from their browser history or from the browser. Um, so a lot of times, you know, people like, you know, click the, uh, the button to say store credentials, uh, for example, in Chrome or IE, and those credentials can be extracted fairly easily. There's a few Metasploit modules to go and extract them. And in addition to not, not only just the credentials, but, um, cookies can be extracted as well. And, you know, potentially like if they had a login to a site, let's say that, you know, there's some sort of admin of, um, I don't know, like a SIM portal or something, you might be able to like log into the SIM and find, you know, an additional vector there somehow. Um, 
Another tool that's this that just came out pretty recently um, from FireEye is this tool called Session Gopher that uh, will find uh, stored credentials for PuTTY, WinSCP, and RDP. Um, you know, potentially, uh, you know, giving you additional access to another system, which might be useful. Another uh, really awesome um, privilege escalation technique came out recently. It was Hot, hot Potato, uh, right at the end of 2016 there. Um, this one was released. And uh, it's, it's from Foxglove Sec. And it's basically a vulnerability in, in which it, it's possible to uh, fake a WPAD proxy on a system, do an NBNS spoofing, and then have basically like you perform like a, like a Windows Defender update. And it will basically man in the middle that, that connection out and allow you to utilize like that system level priv privilege that the Windows Defender update is using um, against the own system to run something. So you could tell it to run a command you wanted to run, like let's say add a new user or something, um, and you know, add a new admin. Uh, so very cool there. Uh, and the last thing, and I think this is probably the most important thing that I've, uh, I've seen in terms of privilege escalation um, in the last few years is PowerUp from HarmJoy. Uh, it's an amazing PowerShell tool that will check a number of different things, uh, including you know, finding hijackable DLLs, it'll find unattended install files, um, you know, various modifiable services. And in addition to that, it also provides uh, various tools for, for actually exploiting those. So it not only will tell you like, here's a vulnerability, here's, here's something that you might be able to exploit, here's a tool to actually go write like the binary or write the DLL that you could use to hijack that process. So um, that's the tool I wanted to demo today because it's, uh, it's pretty fun. So let's go over to our PowerUp demo. Okay, so we've got a Windows 7 box here. Um, we've got a current user as uh, MVers, and we'll go ahead and net local group administrators to show that uh, our MVers user is not in the local admins group. He's also, he's not a domain admin. Um, so, you know, we shouldn't be able to really run anything as an admin um, currently. So let's go ahead and run PowerUp to see if there's any privilege escalation vectors that he might be able to exploit. Um, so let's go ahead and run PowerShell that exe dash exec bypass. Um, and we're going to import the module power up. Um, so, you know, with power up there's, like I said, uh, there's a few different specific uh, modules for the various different vulnerabilities that you might want to run. Or um, if you want to run all of them, you can run invoke dash all checks. And that will check uh, all the privilege escalation vulnerabilities that power up knows about. Um, so you can see right here, it, it tries to first just say, hey, is this guy in a, in a local admin group? Um, checks for various unquoted service paths. It checks for uh, service executable and argument permissions. Checks for service permissions. Um, you know, checks for a lot of different things that commonly might lead to privilege escalation. And um, a lot of times we found a number of these different things uh, are in fact vulnerable on, on systems that we're testing against. Um, one, in spe one specific thing that I have found kind of often is uh, always install elevated in the registry. Um, so I, I decided to kind of demo that one here because I have seen it a few times on various assessments. Um, so this one is, is kind of a, a really terrible vulnerability because um, what that essentially means is if, if always install elevated um, is enabled in the registry, that essentially means that any user, regardless of whether or not they're an admin or not, can run any executable as an admin. That's really bad because all a user has to do is create a binary that adds a new local admin or does something that they want to do maliciously, um, run it just norm, like a normal user would run a, a program and it will automatically run that program as an admin. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, HarmJoy added in like the various functions to actually perform these these various uh, exploits against these vulnerabilities, which I think is very awesome. So, for example, the write dash user add msi is what we're going to do um, to to write out an msi file that will create us a new local admin. So, um, write user add msi. So, you know, after we've already imported PowerUp, we just run write dash user add msi. It will generate this new user add msi right here on the desktop. And let's let that finish up. And then once that's done, um, if when we run it, it will allow us to either, um, here we go. So when we run it, it'll allow us to add a, you know, a, a new user. We can name it whatever we want. Um, you have to go to password. Um, I like on this current system, I actually have to modify the default password because it doesn't meet the password complexity requirements for the system. Um, you know, it does need to actually, the password you put here does have to actually like be a valid password for the system or it won't work. 
Um, so you give it a uh, you know username you want, you give it the password you want, and the group we want is administrator. So let's go and create. And now let's go check local group administrators. And we have our new backdoor user right there. So if we wanted to, we could now go run a command as the backdoor user. Um, and, and that would be our administrative user on the system. So essentially we've escalated privileges using power up pretty neat, huh? So, all right, that is it for this edition of, uh, tradecraft security weekly. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, you know, you probably want to go do, um, this is for, for the blue team anyway, is, uh, you know, for each of your, your standard windows images, like prior to you pushing them out or, um, you know, reinstalling on, on new systems, you know, run things like power up against them and, and check them for privilege escalation vulnerabilities. That way you're not just pushing out, uh, you know, vulnerable software into your environment and, you know, allowing any normal user to uh, escalate privileges. Uh, I've also got, um, you know, a couple more privilege escalation um, Tradecraft Security Weekly is coming up in the near future. So stay tuned for those. I'm going to do one for Linux and also one for network level uh, vulnerabilities, which will be a lot of fun. So uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm on, I'm at DapTac on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.